Paul Wellman at the Leckenfield restaurant. Uh, we're doing a dish today of uh, beef, bread and dripping. We're using this lovely Irish beef. We're using the rump. Uh, I'm going to make a braised rump cap. We're going to cap that with some lovely beef dripping. And then we're going to make a tartare to show that real grassy notes, that real flavour of the Irish beef um, to complement that. Okay, so I'm going to uh, break down this rump um, into the three parts that I want to use for the dish. I'm going to remove some of this fat, which will give me a chance then to render this down for some dripping. Obviously, buying the whole rump is obviously quite a lot to get for, uh, for the home. But if you speak to your butcher, I'm sure they can get you the different components broken down. Obviously, if you're making it for, for home, leave the fat on there. Ask your butcher to keep the fat on there. Fat's a fantastic thing. Making to dripping is, is, is amazing. It's so versatile. You can use it for so many things. Once you've made it, it's like, like duck fat, goose fat. Beef dripping's the same. So I've removed the, uh, the rump cap. It's a lovely piece of meat. Um, this also would be fantastic, just roasted like a steak, but it will have a bit more bite to it than what you'd expect from a fillet. Uh, but it's got great depth of flavour. And it's got great, great colour in that as well. So obviously grass-fed um, beef, the animals are there, they're, they're in their natural habitat, they're eating what they, what they enjoy and what they should be eating. The flavour is going to be fantastic. Um, if it's aged after that in the right way, grass-fed is some of the best beef you can taste. First of all, with the rump cap, I'm going to seal this, stay naturally caramelised, the sugar's coming out of it. And once it's sealed all the way over, I've got a back here, a little pan, with some uh, mirepoix, some vegetables, some carrots, celery and onions. I'm going to place that in some, inside, some thyme, red wine and a good beef stock. The beef stock has been made with beef bones, again ask your butcher for beef bones. That's just been simmered for like uh, 12 hours, get a real nice depth of flavour coming from those beef bones. So next it's time to make a gentleman's relish. So first of all, tomatoes, we want to smoke them. We smoke them with hay, but you can use wood chips. Um, so we're going to smoke these for a few hours, get a nice smoky flavour into there, and then we'll make the gentleman's relish from that. The uh, next stage of the braised rump cap. So it's been cooking now for four or five hours. So it's so tender, it literally just pulls apart. So we're going to add some of the uh, reduced beef liquid back. So this we're going to set into uh, ramekins, leaving enough space at the top to cap it with the beef dripping. So this will go in the fridge now for 20 minutes, half an hour, just to firm that up and then we'll top it with the, the beef dripping. So whilst the uh, beef is setting in the fridge, we're going to finish the gentleman's relish. So obviously the smoked tomatoes that we smoked earlier, some apple, a few anchovy fillets, some onions, some de-stone prunes. So everything's quite large in here because obviously it's going to cook for a long time. White wine vinegar, orange juice, fresh orange juice, a nice bite of English mustard, and the sweet element which is the brown sugar. This now goes onto the stove and it's cooked for around two hours until it's nice and soft, uh, sticky, and then we blend it to a smooth puree and then we use that to garnish the dish. It adds like a nice little uh, acidity to the dish, which is quite fatty and rich. This is a nice counterpoint. The next stage is the tartare. So we've got this nice muscle of rump that we prepped earlier. The thing with tartare is you want to make sure that it's cut nice and small, but nice and even. You don't want it to be chopped down so much or, or blended. It has to have a bit of texture. And hand chopping it is the best way of creating that. And you can see a texture on that. It just, it almost tears. So like all tartars, the usual components, we use the same. Shallots, parsley, cornichons, capers, and the grated egg. Just a little bit of grated egg white and yolk. A nice bit of richness to it. And mix that right up. Everything coated, everything mixed. So it's time to plate up. We have the bread and dripping, which obviously we brought out the fridge as well. Now we're just going to blow towards the top, just to release that fat. Most tartars are served with raw egg yolk, but what we do, the restaurant, is we serve it with a confit yolk. So we basically cook the yolk, the egg yolk, 64 degrees for an hour and a half. We're going to pipe that on top like you would normally have the raw egg yolk. The gentleman's relish, which we cooked earlier, just some sourdough toast, just literally char-grilled, dressed with olive oil. 
And to finish off, just some wood sorrel with a bit of acidity. And there we have the rump of Irish beef, bread and dripping, tartar, gentleman's relish.